We haven't done this in a minute. Y'all make some noise. If you will, please join me in welcoming Tyler the King. Okay. For Discord. For Discord. For our, oh, our yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Tyler, how you doing? I'm blessed, dude. Life's awesome. I have no complaints. I mean, you, you I'm a little exhausted, like... but thirty thousand feet up, I'm I'm so happy. Love to hear that. Oh. Love to hear that. You know, our all stars have been excited to hear from you. I mean, we were we were talking a little bit before you came out. I I would figure if it was quiet in here, that'd be fucking weird. It'd be a little weird. You'd be like, "What? I don't know if I want to go out there with him." <laughs> How are y'all? That's hot. Y'all all from LA, yeah? No. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Oh, oh. <laughs> Look, you can't. Come on, you gotta be aware. Aside from like the city, city. When I hear someone from Vegas, I'm like, where? <laughs> But I'm not from there, so I can't think of like residential areas. <laughs> it's like really life out there outside of like. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. So Tyler, um, you know we're we're here under you know a couple of different things we want to talk to you about. But I think I love to chat with you at first about um, your partnership with Converse. Right? It's been five years this partnership, um, been a big fan of what you've been doing together. Um, tell me how um, or why that partnership aligns so much with you personally. Um, I'm trying to think, do I give you bullet points? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so I'll give it to you. I had this idea to make a shoe. Um, we was gonna do it on our own. Mm. That shit is really hard like really hard to get it right. Um, a friend of mine by the name of Pharrell Williams was like, yo, little bro, how's the shoe right. thing going? I'm like, oh, we're figuring it out. We just got a few samples. They're horrible. <laughs> this is going to be a long winded process. He's like, hold on. I'm going to put you in contact with someone named Paul that works at uh, Converse. Um, you don't have to do anything with him, but he might have some insight for you. Long story short, the, well, small world, that guy knew Clancy, my manager, for mm. years. So that was an easy thing. Met up with him, blah, blah, blah. Ended up meeting with Tim and Lindsay. Was like, it, let's just do something together because they had the resources. And I'm like, I'm here to learn. I don't, mm. when it comes to things like that, I don't really have an ego i'm like bro teach me whatever and then from there just the illest relationship happened they a lot of people aren't even able to say this like man they let me do whatever the <laughs> I want. and it's been the illest like relationship that i've had with like a company yeah it's awesome that's great to hear right because you know a lot of times you never know kind of the breadth of freedom that you you might be able to have as a creative going into that kind of corporate structure, how has that evolved? Like, right, but like from the first time you're there, you might have been trying to explore, but now how have you evolved into like that process and understanding more about creating footwear? Well, it's, I, I kind of go in with like, yo, I want to do this, that, this and that. And it's more so just finding a team of people that are as optimistic as you and like, are like, mm -hmm. huh, let's figure it out. Like, I'm not big on knowing what no means. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, if it's not a way in the front door, we'll go through the roof, we'll blow up the house, <laughs> we'll dig under it, but we're gonna get in there. That's just always been me. I never was like a super like, oh, they said no, so it's over. Like, uh, I'm not with that. And then finding a team who's like willing to take risk and say, let's do that, just makes the creative process always at a 10. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always about who you get to work with, too, right? Like, it's it's never just one contribution. It's a it's a it's a collection of folks that are trying to get towards this the shared thing. And it's always great when you can work with those type of people where they're like open to ideas. It's not like to your point, like shutting things down. I've worked with people where it's like, "Yo, what if we do this?" 
and then they already edit in their head and mm. then they're like, oh, someone said no to something like that before, so I don't know. Well, this right. And I'm like, bro, get out the gutter. Worst coming to worst, it's a no, but let's at least try and then fail. Mm. And with Converse, it's like, man, we had so many different ideas that didn't work and it's okay because all of that got us to this one end result that doesn't even have anything to do with it but mm. you just learn along the way and i'm probably talking in circles but just having people there that's like F it, let's try that is that's right now i think that's dope and i think that's a great takeaway to think about is that you know don't edit the ideas before you've tried them like before you've actually decided like that actually doesn't work out like actually try it yeah you gotta see the <laughs> in order to know what to do but some people try to know what to do before they see the shit and it just fully hinders mm. everything and i'm just i'm so i don't get embarrassed so i'm so okay with failing and f***ing up and saying oh well that didn't work what's next and surrounding yourself with people like that is the illest shit. where does that come from for you like you when, oh i like, don't know i'm I was just you know born I mean? this way you know, like, you just, like, you just, like, you go. Like, it, you don't have, like, that apprehension. Well, it's, me and my friend talk about all the time. It's, like, nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Just that idea. And I've just always been a super curious, okay, what's that over there? Like, I hosted my kindergarten graduation. Like, I was the <laughs> MC. It wasn't a teacher. Like, I was like, all right, guys, that was the dance class. Up next, we have Ron that's going to show us a magic trick before we get to the ceremony. Like, that was me. So I've always been, like, yeah, that guy. You don't know um, any different. Yeah, I just, it's just me. And, you know, some people are more quiet and reserved and observant. Mm -hmm. and some people are center of attention, da, da, da. And the nurturing part from that is just, like, I had a mother who was like, yeah, go on. Go on, dance. <laughs> <laughs> go on, do this. <laughs> and it just says, oh, okay, f*** it. And you just keep growing up with that, that energy, that yeah. thought, that, um, just like that. So then when it comes to like uh, having like aspirations or dreams or mm. goals, growing up, not worrying about what other people think or knowing you yeah. can just do it, it goes to that. So it's like, I'm going to do that in 10 years. And then when it happens, people are like, how did that happen? And it's <laughs> like, I don't know. It's I've just, that. that's just how I think. Man, I, I, I think that's a, a great way to be raised. But I think also for some of the folks that might not come from that type of scenario, I think a good takeaway, too, is like you could still surround yourself with people that will nurture you as you are and what you want to accomplish. Right. Like that's still kind of. What oh, you yeah. Do today, my friends right? are this Jasper. Jasper has been at every show I've ever done, even when I'm 16 making the worst songs and beats and like yo i got this idea dude like and we could put this on the shirt and then no when i go on stage because we're performing at a church i'm gonna pull my pants down and hump the air <laughs> and that man is right there like all right i'm right there with you <laughs> and what that is is everyone wants a cheerleader which just goes back to if i walk in converse and i'm like yo I know no one's going to buy this, but let's do an all silver shoe that looks like 3M that on the jackets construction workers wear. And they're like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> and you need that. You, you need, need that. cheerleader. Everyone wants a cheerleader. Absolutely. Speaking of, of, of Converse and over the years, um, where where is it going? Like, where where is where is this partnership going? What do you think, what else are you going to create that you can share? One thing that uh, I love having my hat like this, cause then, <laughs> then you can see how small this brim is. <laughs> this is so stupid. I love it. Um, I think I think because of the internet and just I think I really think the internet ramped up in 2016. Mm. Like something happened and just. Phew. And because of that, like it's no more privacy. Yeah. Everyone wants to know something. Everyone wants a leak. Everyone wants to just know things. Nothing could be a surprise. And if I sit here and tell you what we have planned or what da 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 da, then it's no point in really working on how to even show you. Yeah. Like the element of surprise is fun. The the initial, oh, I hate this or Ugh, I like this, it will get lost if I'm like, yo, in three months I'm putting out an orange shirt. <laughs> and then when I put it out, <laughs> when I put it out. You knew it was gonna come, so it's 
that excitement is gone. So yeah. I can't even answer that question. That's fair. That's fair. I, re- I respect it. We will be patient and we will wait. Be patient, man. Because it's, you're right. The you know what I hate? Great. You know what is one of the like most obvious forms of like insecurity to me? When artists put a snippet up of a song on the internet and wait to see how people react to it and let the let the crowdsourcing of opinion dictate if they're going to put that out. How do you not like your own song enough to put it out? How do you mm. wait to, oh, they not f-ing with it? We'll scratch it. Oh, they f-ing with it? All right, let's rush and, 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 keep, and keep doing that and then shoot a video for it. It's like, no, just put this out. Like, what? No. <laughs> Like when they be like, yo, sneak peek. <laughs> and it's a sample. It's a sample that's not going to come out for nine months. I know yeah. my shoes work. Yeah, you know how it works. And then like if people are like, ooh, this ain't it. And then that they one go never away. comes out, right. then they rework. But it's like, bro, have confidence in your mm. shit. Like, I, I, hate, I hate the leak snippet. Oh, this is what I'm working on, sneak peek. Shit. Like, bro, just put the shit out when it's done and go 100%. Mm. Hey, have confidence in what you're going to put That's out. That's how I do with music. You don't see me like, yo, new album coming in eight months. I shut the <laughs> up till it's done. <laughs> and then one day I pop the <laughs> out. You either like it or not, but I'm going full force with that shit. And bam. <laughs> we could all lead life a little bit more like Tyler. Seriously. I just think it's ill. And again, like, I I don't know. I'm 30 now. Yeah. So when I was 15, like, the way music was just coming out was like, it was just different. Mm-hmm. And now everyone... Sneak Peek's music. Bro, it's movies not coming out for two years, and they're like, they just started shooting. Like, just surprise me with a trailer, bro. (laughs) I don't know. It's so weird to me. (laughs) Speaking of, I guess, how, like, folks are putting different things out, right? Like, so one of the things that keeps getting talked about are NFTs. Bro, I am so... Finish your question. I, I'm so sorry. No, no, sorry. that was the setup. I cut I, you I off don't even need jump. to finish it because I want to get your. I want to get that reaction. Dude, I. You know what I did? <laughs> you know what I did? Uh, what was that, Clancy? Oh, that was a week ago. I'm like tours coming up. We got the floor stuff. We got golf wing. I got. I have a lot going on. And like sometimes it's like a lot to juggle, especially when I'm about to be gone for two months. Mm for tour so I'm like all right I just need a day where I don't do anything I like being outside like that's it I was never a stay at home watch Netflix type of guy that's not being dismissive to anyone who does that but I like being outside so I'm like yo I'm gonna just go to SF and go to Marin Marin is like 40 minutes outside it's beautiful ended up at this park with all these ill redwoods and trees and ended up on this crazy hike Our driver didn't have service, so we just ended up on a random street asking some random guy if he could drive us. It was like he was just driving by, taking pictures. I'm just talking. Like, it was awesome, though. Real life, just living. I'm hugging trees and trying to find animals and climbing. It was awesome. What the f*** is an NFT, bro? (laughs) If I'm really outside... I bought a Mini Cooper three weeks ago, 1991 Rover Mini Cooper, just to put a bike rack on it to drive to San Pedro to ride my bike down the hills out there because it's awesome. I'm really outside. Mm. What the f is an NFT? <laughs> like, what is an NFT? What is an NFT? I drove my, I didn't have a drive, I drove myself here because I like to drive. And you know what? Uh, me and my friend, Carlsbad, it's a donut shop in Carlsbad. He went last week, I said, we'll go this week. Do you know how far Carlsbad is just for a donut? But that's what I'm doing. I'm really outside living. So what the f- is an NFT? I paint at home. I play instruments. Yeah. I know this who's scoping. I have a friend making me speakers by hand right now. What the f- is an NFT? <laughs> is this paint? But it's just a swinging contest. And like, look, I bought a picture of a monkey. <laughs> now, now, but the idea of an NFT, which I'm not fully informed, so I'm kind of speaking out of this surface level ignorance. So excuse me 
when this comes out and some is in the comments like he doesn't know what the f- he's talking about. I don't. But <laughs> <laughs> the idea of an NFT, I guess, is like art or something. But none of, at least for the art side, none of the examples that I've seen is like beautiful art. Yeah, it's a f- monkey in a supreme hoodie. <laughs> Like, where's the, where's Mark Ryden's thing? Or, like, where's the artist who paint and then they sell, or, like, oh, the NFT, you get exclusive content of so-and-so doing this. He's smoking in a studio. That's not exclusive content. He does that on his Instagram story. <laughs> so I'm fully, like, not into it because this, you can't NFT mm. me looking at you in real mm. life right now. I can't. So I just am fully not into it until it's something I could tangible. You yeah, I like tangible. I like buying magazines. I love books. Yeah, I love books. It's a book that came out f- four weeks ago. It's called Black Ivy. Mm. Black Ivy. Look it up. And it's this guy named Jason Jules who put the book together. He dresses ill. I love older black dudes that dress so ill. He's so sick, yo. And um, he put this book together of just like black artists, musicians, directors, you name it, from late 40s up until like the 80s of how they were dressing, hmm. which was to rather like, to, I can't even articulate it, but it was like some political stuff and just style. It's so ill, but you see like, Miles Davis or Grover Washington or like uh, Thelonious Monk and like just the illest people dressed crazy and he goes into detail explaining it and I'm like this book is like the bible oh man I'm not they had it right in the 60s I DM the I find out who wrote it I DM the guy just to say hey I read this book this is so good just want to give you the graces this guy says to me, yo, this is crazy. I wanted you to write the forward for this book. Wow. But I had no way to get in contact with you. So this is the craziest thing. And I'm like, bro, someone told me to get the book. I went to Barnes and Nobles. It wasn't in all of them. So I drove to four different ones to get it because I <laughs> like it. And just to hear this guy be like, yo, this is crazy. Da, da, da. You can't NFT like that. Mm. You cannot. Mm. I can't tell you a story. What I'm going to tell you, I went on form and... I bought a monkey. But, like, now I have a story. Now I could tell you about this book. I don't know what's it, 30 people in here, conversion rate. Eight of you will probably look it up to remember to look it up. Two of you will probably actually get the book. Who knows what that will spark? Mm. That's the shit that an NFT can't do. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's real experience, right? That's what you describe. I like, it's experience. like real experience. I like experiences. being at shows. I like yeah. touching a tree. I like hitting the curb with my will and saying, because that's <laughs> that's an experience. I, now I get to, now I have a story to tell my friend when I eat tomorrow. Right, totally. Like it's it's a part of life. It's a part of a conversation. I love like, it. This really happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, switching a little bit into more on the career side, right? And you know, you you gone back a little bit to like being 15, 16. and I think when we look at a lot of what's happening in your world today. Um, we see a lot of headlines and a lot of those headlines are saying things like this is Tyler's moment, right? And from the albums to the live performances to the luxury line to the upcoming tour to the recent appearance at Paris Fashion Week, right? Um, you're, you are creating at a very high level across the board, I'd say. Where does that inspiration come from for all of those different projects? Like, how does that process work? Uh... I just make <laughs> it's I I honestly wish I had like the deep like answer bro I'd like yo I want to do this all right let's do it and we figure it out and we try to execute it at the illest level uh that we can yeah. and that's what it is um I've been uh, the scoring thing I've been saying that since day one like when I was eating roaches I'm like I'm gonna fuck everyone in that I was like, I also want to score movies one day when I'm older. And mm. people brushed it off. And, mm. you know, it didn't happen in a year or five years. But ten years later, I get to score the Louis Vuitton show. Yes. And they're playing the music I wrote. And, mm. man, that 
that orchestra and the, it was the illest. It was some, those those kids are the geniuses. I'm <laughs> nothing. Those kids were actual geniuses. But it's like it's been happening in every. Who that boy off of Flower Boy mm -hmm. track five, I believe. It has a minute and two second intro of just strings and this and it's building up. That's and that's one of my hardest hitting songs and the people go crazy for it. I put a minute long intro on that strings and arrangement and all of this. Dude, the scoring thing I did two weeks ago on Paris Fashion Week has been under people's noses this whole time when mm. you think about it. Mm. But some people don't pay attention of course. as deep like that. But some of the times when I do these things, it's like, bro, I've been doing a version of this stuff for a while. People were like, oh, he rode the bike, so sweet. I do that all the time. <laughs> but like, it's more nuanced. It was an ill moment, but like, yeah, I pretty, I just do what I like, and I've always done things I like. Yeah. The the, the floor stuff, uh, it's a leopard print motif that I put on, like the sweaters and the trunks and things. Mm -hmm. I'll read comments of kids like, oh, he changed. What is this? I can't believe he's doing this. Shit. I'm like, man, I remember walking into the adult swim office at 19 in an all over print cheetah print, an all over print leopard shirt. I won my VMA uh, two years later in the leopard print Supreme hat. A few years later, I had the all leopard print with the pink fur, with the pink hat doing that. Da, 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 da. Like, it's all been there. Mm. It's just in different Iteration. versions. So, all right, I'm 30 now. Maybe at 35, I'll have a leopard print car seat for my kid <laughs> if I have one. But, like, it's all kind of been there the bike thing isn't new it's mm. videos of me and jasper at like 14 riding through hot right. like it's all kind of been there so some people are shocked and mm -hmm. when they're shocked i'm like oh you haven't looked behind this curtain mm. so, yeah so it's shocking to them it's not shocking to you this is just a part of what your process has been y'all know twisted fantasy by kanye right mm -hmm. okay i'm sorry next question it's just uh <laughs> So that song, like, it'll be like six minute songs out of nowhere. It's like a lady singing opera and strings and stuff. And then the beat will come back and someone will rap. Is this 2000 or 2001? Anyway, Trina, the rapper, has a song with Ludacris. And it was her first single off of uh, the album. It wasn't the baddest. Might be the second, second single. Not sure. But she has a song called Be All Right with Ludacris, two changes in the video getting off of a tour bus. <laughs> Kanye West produced that. When you get a chance, go listen to Be All Right by Trina and listen to the structure of that song, these kind of weird but hard-hitting drums, bass line hitting, they spitting over it, Ludacris and Trina. And then in the middle, out of nowhere, the drums come out, it's a string or string arrangement, and this lady, like, humming. That was just the build-up for, you know, 10 years later to get to Twisted Fantasy. Wow. So when people heard that album, was like, how did he do this? I'm like, bro, he's been building he's been up for building. this for so long. <laughs> Y'all just ain't been paying attention. <laughs> so when you get a chance, check that song out. It's really an interesting uh, thing. That, Gosh, you, you know, just touched on a lot of a lot of interesting things in, in the, uh, those different stories. I guess one of the things I wanted to, to ask you about in that is that essentially a lot of kind of what you're saying there, there's a theme of long term. It's not necessarily instant gratification, right? Just because you think that idea is ready for everyone, they may not mentally be there. They may not have the references to be there. So there might actually be a subliminal in that Trina song yeah. that prepared us, but we didn't really catch it yeah. until this this album. No, yeah, instant gratification is not always the homie hmm. at all. It's good for like a pastry or a donut, but like some people, some people want that instant hit, so they'll do like the dumbest, which fucks up future opportunities because, like, that's a long winded story, but I feel like everyone in here is smart enough to know that. <laughs> you know, one thing you had said earlier, you were talking about how um, you're like, one day I'm going to score a film, and, and people just kind of shrugged it off. Are there, are there any projects like that that maybe you have worked on and they kind of just got shelved that you're like, damn, I really wish that was out in the world right now? No. Mm. Mm. I started a bossa nova album in like a 
indie rock, that sounds weird to say, indie rock album in 2013, in 2012, and did any of it make Wolf? I guess Answer, and then Tree Home was like one of the weaker ones, but yeah, I, I have that like in the can that I never put out, yeah. but aside from that, no. Everyone hated my Cherry Bomb album at first. <laughs> And then, like, five years later, they're like, actually, this is good. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then you watch run with, and I don't like taking credit because I steal from everyone, but you watch people take that aesthetic, and it's a whole subgenre based on that album mm. that I thought everyone was not f***ing with. So it's crazy to see, like, oh, that did have some type of impact, right. which is the opposite of what I felt everyone felt. And some things take long. Some things are just so jarring or just, like, not what people are used to that it takes time. And I put the instrumentals out um, last year because I'm, like, still this day, it's instrumentals on there that I don't even think I could make today. Oh, wow. Because my, on that album, I wanted to be the best producer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be, like, I could do every single genre. I could put string sections in this song when it's not needed. I could do changes. This has the craziest arrangements. No one's with me at all. That's what I wanted for the Cherry Bomb album. So then the lyrics and like the actual songs took a back seat. So when people heard it, they were like, what the is this? And I'm like, it's amazing. You don't hear that bridge, you dumb. <laughs> They're not thinking about that. I am. Right. So because of that, it got the reaction it did. But then when I put the instrumentals out, people were like, oh, shit we see what he was trying to do and it feels good like after a while for people to be like walk up to me yo bro that two-seater instrumental or that pilot instrumental is crazy and i'm like are you lying <laughs> yeah and yeah no it's some stuff stuff just instant gratification is not always not the true. homie it takes time sometimes that's a bar <laughs> which sucks hype williams put belly out at the time everyone was like what the I think he got scared mm. to make anything else and that hindered the greatness and like the ill shit that he could have did and that's one of those stories that bums me out so fucking bad because he didn't follow none of the snobby movie rules and like whatever you think about Belly like it, hate it, da 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 you could watch that and be like oh in 98, 99 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, this man was on something else as a director for a yeah. movie yeah. just imagine if like he would have did a second or third what that would have been it kills me because that is my favorite video director like just watching what he did with missy and everyone and like uh, being a kid that made my brain oh that bums me out sometimes you just Instant gotta keep going yeah you have to just keep it going bro it's never like if the, ob the objective is not to perfect it the objective is to add to it like keep tinkering with yeah it. keep, keep, like, keep learning and idea. be your biggest cheerleader i wish hype was like we doing another movie. <laughs> well, Tyler, I got I got some questions other than mine. So from from the All Star community, they've submitted some questions that they want to ask you. Some of our friends that are actually tuning in on Discord. So I'm gonna ask you some of those. Ooh, these better not suck. <laughs> Love hit me with dumb <laughs> questions. They be crazy. <laughs> Tyler, you wore an orange hat in 2014. Why'd you wear that <laughs> <Why'd> orange <laughs> hat? We got some. You ready? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hide my face because I can't hide it, like my expression. So you go on in. Okay. <laughs> All right. So our first question is coming from Helena in Holland. And the, the question is, what's your biggest, weirdest fear? Uh, weirdest? Mm-hmm. Not sure. I'm scared. Okay, I'm scared of going deaf. Hmm. I'm terrified of maggots. Like I am, I don't I probably said this story in an interview a few years ago, not sure, but when I was nine years old, it was a little liquor store. This is off Freeman and 118th and Hawthorne. That liquor store's still there. I went to that liquor store and got my usual little 50 cent little Debbie pastry, and it was the Swiss roll. I loved it. And I was, so the way I would eat it, if you know this, oh, oh no, oh no. Oh. If 
if you know the if you know the Swiss roll, it's like this circ like cylinder. It's like circular, and at the bottom where they stop the chocolate, it's like the hard little chocolate part because that's where it builds up. So I usually grab that part and eat that chocolate stick. Pause. Eat that. Eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, you walked into bro, it. Bro, no, they're, they're going to edit that like the ASAP Rocky Seaman video. You see that one? <laughs> Dude, just me saying I'm going to eat that chocolate stick. <laughs> Whatever. I'm here. So I eat that, right? Eat off both of them. Then I take one, and I would open it. I'm nine. So I'll just, man, just eat the cream, right? So I did it to the first one, and I was like, oh, this one is chewy. <laughs> I ate that one, killed it. And I went to the second one, and when I opened it, I was like, what's that red and green thing? And it was moving. And I'm like, and it was two maggots. Just in there. And I flipped the f out. I was staying with my aunt, my aunt Rose, who was babysitting me. And oh man, that that me up. To this day, I I like if y'all want to like do the Ashton Kutcher like punked prank on me one day, just sit one here. <laughs> I'm out. I don't f with those at all. They're the devil. They're evil. <laughs> They're evil. Okay. <laughs> I do not maggot. So if that answers her question. I think it does. <laughs> but then again, I don't know anyone that really likes maggots. Yeah, but like, if, if y'all see me, I'll be like, oh, stop. Like, I would leave. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. Uh, our next question is going to come from John in Auckland. And the question is, What's something you would tell yourself at the beginning of your career? <laughs> um, I don't think nothing. I think I have no regrets. Everything panned out. I was a, I was a super annoying and hyper but focused mm. uh, child. Or if you begin at the beginning of my professional career, what eighteen, nineteen? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't say anything that. Everything that happened was awesome, and it got me here. Yeah. Maybe stop yelling on all the songs. <laughs> but when I learned that, it was at the right time. So nothing. 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 You know, you mentioned focus, right? You you kind of used that word a bit in this conversation. What does focus look like to you? What does that mean to you when you say focused, right? Like. Um, I think I think just truly, truly caring. And having a, uh, uh, I, I, a few of my friends, I would say, hey, spend a week drawing yourself every day. Monday, draw yourself. Tuesday, draw yourself. Friday. And it's interesting what stays. It's interesting how they see themselves. It's interesting what stays in the drawing and then what gets added so for me like I was like during quarantine I just kept drawing myself and it was me in the furry hat with the Rolls Royce at the dock and I, ke I kept drawing that I just kept drawing that with my two trunks right there kept drawing that and then the album came out and that's what you see and the, and the, and the focal point isn't just getting that it's getting that which means finishing the album that goes with it mm. working to a place where I could get that car mm. how do I get that hat no one makes that blue hat like that specific color so I have to make it and like all those type of things and I tell my friends yo draw yourself draw yourself what's that and then you know he, he always one of my friends sees himself uh for sakes, they keep seeing themselves at a basketball court or something. And 
I'm like, well, what is that basketball court? And he's like, oh, that's the basketball court that, you know, one day I want at my house. I'm like, okay, then get it. And the focus is what are you going to be doing for the next whatever time to Mm. get to that photo? Mm. He bought himself a house not too long ago. Doesn't have the basketball court yet, but that's the start. Who knows what will happen? Maybe he'll sell that and get the one with it. Maybe he'll build it there. Mm. But it's the focus point of that end result. Me as 19, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a Grammy and I'm going to do this. And I had a load of things, but I made sure to keep putting myself in positions and working towards it. So when it happened, everyone shocked. But again, not me. (laughs) Because I've been laser focused on that since the top. Wow. That was that was very inspiring. That's hot. <laughs> all right. So enough from me. Enough from some of our all stars on the on, from the Discord. Let's hear from some of you all that are here in person. You know, we got Tyler here, and I'm sure y'all got to have some questions for him. So we have a mic over here, so he can hear you all. Um, who wants to go up there? And ha- let's go. Let's go. <laughs> hey. You all look really cool too. I know I probably keep making weird eye contact with everyone, <laughs> but everyone in here is aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> keep it up. <laughs> and let's have you introduce yourself, and then let's have you ask your question. Hi, Tyler. My name is Victoria. What up? Hey, I'm from Georgia. I'm not one of the people from LA. What part? I live in south of Atlanta. It's like called Henry County. Yeah, Don't nobody's know if I've ever been heard of there, it. there, but. I love Atlanta because it's a city, but it's like it's in the woods. It's in the woods, dude. And Piedmont Park, I think that's what it's called. Bro, the first time I went there in 2017, we just rode our bikes through it. Bro, beautiful, gorgeous, and I love the Waffle House. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) that's right. But no, it's no, we don't have it here. But it's not just. It's not just the food. It's something very specific. It's always an older black lady. In there. <laughs> and she always, I'm about to cry because it's the sweetest thing. She always walks up and she says, hey, baby, what you want? <laughs> it's the warm. I feel the, like that needs to find its way. It's to the album, warmest. <laughs> getting called baby. by the. It's like, I don't, I don't know what it is. It's some like. I'm, yeah, it's yeah. a hug in words. I don't think the human brain is at a place where we could comprehend what that means. Mm. But when I hear it, I'm just like, I want whatever you could do whatever. me. Yeah. Except for <laughs> gravy. <laughs> to your question. Okay. I'm sorry. I talk no, a lot. It's okay. I love the answer. Basically, I work in video, like music video production, and there's never any woman of color there. And when I saw that you worked with Tara, it made me appreciate it work more because I saw another woman and I wanted to know what makes that relationship so well so well and you've been working with her from the beginning so like I'm so and I grew up around all women too so I'm just so appreciative of y'all and just want to protect and like I love y'all and y'all think of just that us super simple minded surface level guys don't bro like on a spiritual emotional like it's a different type of focus that women have so like someone like Tara like when we're working on and it's not just video production she's doing the blue the floor house bro that was mm. her that was so good mm. like she's like out of here so like the details and the things that get done that I know I could not do like for real all of that stuff like and if y'all don't know what video producing is it's put getting done putting it together it's not just me showing up in the with a camera it's like every single thing from the cups that the extras drink out of to the mm-hmm. gas going in the car driving me like everything and uh, the, I don't I honestly don't think those things will be done at the execution at the level of execution that they're at if it wasn't for her mm-hmm. and she knows that okay Let's go. <laughs> and then we'll go here. Yeah. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Vima. You already what know up? where I'm from. I'm Joe. 
What up, Joe? Hey, uh, I'm a production designer, sculptor, model, whatever. I do whatever. Um, I have a question. I'm a production designer primarily, and I heard you talking about world building in terms of the way that you create. That's my, my biggest thing that I love that you do, is you do, I, I know you do that. You don't even have to say that out loud. You're like, <laughs> think about you. your world. I really want to just, it's not even really a question. I just want to hear more about that, actually. It's like, where do you base your, like, where do you start? Do you start with a mood board? Do you do some type of, like, research? I'm, um, I'm you start with a, a color? I'm more of a uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this feel like? When we were in when we were in Marin like a week or so ago, um, we got lost in this little one-way street and we came back down. And it was, uh, it's a lot of trees out there so the sunlight peeks through all of them. And this street, all the houses are wood and weird and the street is really nice and it was leaves. And, and I had like this moment, I was like, this is vinyl. It's the most beautiful thing. And he's like, what? I'm like, you got a street. And it's something about the way that that felt for me. So I'm taking mental notes of like trying to understand me. Like, why does, why do I like how this feels? I don't know. Well, the trees fall like that. And then the ground is here. And then the light only comes through right there. So maybe that's why I like the sunlight. Because if it was full of sunlight, then I wouldn't like it. But it's uh, and then this and that. And well, that Volvo it's not the nicest car, but with this as the backdrop, that work like that's how my brain works. So when I'm like working on a f blue egg-shaped house on top of a mountain, I'm like, well, what's the feeling? What do these clothes feel like? What does that world feel like? And then that's why I'm like, no, everyone park downstairs. We're going to have Rolls Royces drive everyone up the hill. And we're going to have this elderflower rose lemonade as the drink. And only chai lattes. None of that, this and that. And we'll have this and this and that. And when what I had it as when you walk inside of the blue, uh, when you walk inside the blue thing, it wasn't like music playing off of Apple or Spotify. I put together a hundred of my favorite live performances of all time and that played on the screen and that was the music you heard. You heard the claps, you heard the, all of that because of the feeling that watching these different versions of these songs, I know like the back of my hand gave me mm -hmm. to see people see a different version of me with this new world that I built. It just, it's just a feeling. So when you're making your world dial in on, oh, this should feel cold and like super cut like modern homes. And then from there, you work backwards from that end result. And then every detail from the cup to the napkin to this and that will start going because the details is sometimes more important than that big sculpture thing. It's how they get there. It's what it smells like. That's mm -hmm. it. Walk into one of these stores on Rodeo, mm -hmm. walk into Prada or something, and you're going to be like, what's that smell? Oh, because yep. <laughs> oh, the whole thing yeah. really important. It's also like a really cohesive, strong production team that you'd have yeah. backing you also. Man, dude, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> she's the god. Seriously. I was with her yesterday, like, running through questions. The shit she thinks about, bro, I am not, mm -mm. I'll honestly be like, make this blue. <laughs> and she'll be like, but what shade of blue? <laughs> I mean, but it, it matters. You talk no, about a feeling, like, but, but yeah, what color no, is it that? It matters. You know so, like, yeah. and having that team that's, like, on point, on point. And when they not on point, letting them know they're not on point. Because now we at a place where like, if you tell someone, yo, fucking up, uh, I'm, on, I'm gonna cancel them on the internet because they made me, but it's like, bro, you fucking up the shit. And when you have a team that's not fucking your shit up, then the, the, the results are marvelous. So make sure you got a good team. Cool. Thank Thanks, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go here next. You doing all right over here? Dude, I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm I'm good. Look, I, the lavender latte sounds, no, it sounds amazing, but as he knows, okay. <laughs> we going? Don't forget your question. I just, <laughs> I just wanna, so I was being like a little crazy last night. No, let me finish. So we at the grocery store, and I see a cheese I never had. And then I see another cheese I ain't never had. And then I seen another cheese I ain't never had, which resulted in me buying seven cheeses I ain't never had. Take them home, put them in the fridge, whatever. 
woke up early this morning. I was like, yo, I'm gonna try all these cheeses I never had on an empty stomach, dog. That wasn't the mic making that sound earlier. <laughs> I'm on the verge of turning this couch brown. <laughs> so that lavender latte, I'm so happy that you offered me that. But a nigga got to decline. <laughs> We're going to go to the mic. <laughs> too much effort. She's like, this is doing too much. <laughs> She's they like TMI. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what up? <laughs> I'm Marlies. Uh, what up? I'm from Riverside. Okay. Yup. Uh, okay, so I had two questions, but I I'm a. Should I say them both? Can I say them both? Okay. You here. Have your moment. Here. Ask Have for moment. forgiveness later, dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First question. I was just wondering how you seamlessly transition from different personas. Because Goblin, Igor, Tyler, Baudelaire, it's so different. And I was just wondering how you're able to do that when it, music, branding, all of it. Well, it's it's easier than like you you brush your teeth and you walk with your feet, and those are that's here and that's here, but it's the same person, like meaning we're not so black and white. If, if if I like hardcore rap, that doesn't mean I can't listen to like, you know, Gary Bartz and him play his brass instrument. Like it's not that black and white. And I think a lot of people uh, confuse um, a choice um, with pushing another choice to the side. Like it's not always, okay, multiple choice, okay, B. No, it could be A, B, and C. Uh, even at different moments and um, I'm super blessed that I get to live the life I live so you know when I'm when I was 19 I, I, I didn't leave California I never left this state all I knew was my 10 block radius for the most part and then you make goblin with all that and then you travel the world and you see what different weather's like in streets and you go to Norway and see a real Christmas tree growing that f me up it sounds dumb but you always see him in parking lots by a gas station off Centinella. i saw that and i'm like f you go back home and then it's like you can't make the same music you can't i'm not in the same mind state i was two years ago then you put that album out and now you're getting accolades and this and that and hanging with these people and driving this and doing that and it's like still centered, still you, but it's like, huh, then you make that album, and then everyone hates it. And then you're like, wait a minute. Oh, actually, actually. And then you do that, and then you do that, and then you do that. And it's because I'm okay with me where I'm at. I don't like, I don't get big on nostalgia or trying to stay stuck or stay down and real. This is where I'm at in my life right now. I wasn't wearing this 10 years ago. And that's okay. That was ill for that moment. So, you know, when I'm doing something like this Sir Baudelaire thing, that's my infatuation with being in Paris and living this life that I've been living. I'm like, okay, I'm on my flex. Let's do that. I probably got four more months to be in this mind state before I'm on to the next thing. So I'm milking that mother. I don't know what's next, but that's the ill part of life. Because again, I'm not an NFT. I'm really outside. <laughs> So yeah, it's just doing that. You, that outfit, I love the color palette right now. You Thank are you. running that right now. Who knows in eight months, you might be like, I would never do that again. And that's <laughs> okay. okay. People get, uh, because of the internet, people bring up like, but you said this. Yeah, said, past tense. I changed my <laughs> mind. You could change your opinion. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go on to some other shit. It's, and it's the illegal. Your second question. <laughs> I can hear you. We can hear you.
No, I get the sentiment. We get it's just doing you and setting the tone. Like, you got, like, how many slave movies is it, bro? Like, we get it. But then it's like, well, sometimes, like, do, do they do they pick those up because they think that's what we want? Like, oh, like, being real, like, we're sometimes so focused on the past. But Kanye tweeted, Black Future Month. And I understand what he, he's, probably, he's not the most articulate sometimes, but I understand what he's saying. Cause it's like, bro, let's focus on mm. that. And sometimes we'll see some on TV. It's like, dude, they doing this stereotype again. They're doing this again, but we have to continue to push and be like, bro, we not on that. And it's not even always saying, yo, we're not on that. We're against that. It's just doing what that's not and just letting that build up and snowball. And then the, it'll be easier for those doors to, to really open. Because, like, you see it on a, whether it's a academics or whatever. Like, you see what type of stuff gets posted and what doesn't. And we have to allow people to know, like, oh, that you don't see is still existing and it's thriving and it's huge and that's why I like I love love talking my because I'm from a I'm one of y'all so when I talk my it's not like just ego and flexing it's like no we here and we still got the big toys y'all rapping about because I we need that we need that I had Q-tip for that I have Pharrell for that I had Andre 3000 for that so I want to continue to like be that because that's important. So then they could see, oh, it's not just that. What is this? This is thing. And that's just opening those doors. That's what Virgil was doing, you know? So we got to just keep that saying, oh, it's not that, that. Just do. Just do it at the highest level because then they'll, they'll catch on. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your question. <laughs> got one more. With the sweater vest. What's good? Fucking Tommy. <laughs> What's up? It's the deal, bro. What up? So um, you talked about it a little bit earlier, like a while back. I don't know if you remember this, but about how important detail is. And I see that in your music, your clothes, everything. And it's like, I was wondering, like, how important and why is detail so important to you? Uh, I think it's just me. I Man, that's one of those questions that's hard to answer, but... Uh, I probably always refer everything back to music because I just love it so much. But, man, you know your favorite song that you have? And when someone's talking to you and it's playing, you like, yo, shut the fuck up for five seconds. <laughs> this is my favorite part. This is my favorite moment. I always try to make songs for my own enjoyment of my favorite moments. For example, I have a song called Sweet on the last album and just how it starts with just the guitar but then when the beat kicks in the guitar is gone and then when the verse comes the little synth is gone and then it's background vocals and then it's the bridge with Brent and then it's it's all these moments moments and to have moments I mean it's a little bit more detailed than the rest of everything so that's just music and then you put it in clothes and then you put it in videos because you have to be a fan of your own. So when I make a video, it's all these moments and details going in it because I'm also watching it as a fan. So when I'm watching, I'm like, oh, wait, rewind it. I love when I do my arm like that. Oh, I love that thing that's happening in the background. I did that. And those details is sometimes what keep people around for decades. Mm -hmm. They keep looking back into it. That wasn't my stomach. They keep looking back <laughs> into it and things like that. So think of those details. B uh, uh, BBC Ice Cream Season 3, fourth quarter, 2006. It's a red jacket. It's a red jacket. It looks like a members-only jacket. It's red. It has a little dog here. There's nothing. I remember not wanting it. And then I saw it in person and it had the all over print dogs inside. Mm. And I was like, yo, I didn't know they did that. Oh, shit, let me see what else is there. And that's what you want people to do with your art. Oh, 
I didn't, oh, I didn't know that was coming. I didn't know that was, ah, because if they know exactly what it is first go, then it's uh, cool, great. Obviously. Yeah, you want, you want those details, that stitching, that print, that tag, that, that you can't buy it online. You can only get it at this place that you have to hike to. Those things, because people remember that. I'm this is 15 years ago, and I'm still talking about that dumb <laughs> jacket. <laughs> Think about that. For sure. Thank you. Love. Got one one last question here. If I'm short. Hi. <laughs> well, what's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. Great, great. My name is Michaela. I'm what from up? Minneapolis. What up? How are you? What up? I'm good. Um, my question, I guess, is. Uh, as you are going through, you, you know, um, getting into different modes in your artistry, um, I feel like I relate to rapid fire, like ideas and thoughts and things that you want to do. How do you know, or not even how do you know, but like, how do you start? Because I feel like for myself, when I have so many things that I want to do and I'm like really excited about it, I'm just like, mm. I'm, you're like, you know, you get kind of like stalled in it because you're like, I want to start here. And then you're also so like detailed in it. So when you get into it, you funnel into it, but then, you get into a different mode and you get into some other or you get like inspired by that and then you want to like funnel into it and you get like super detailed into it and before you know it you have like six different things and they all kind of at the starting point which is a good point because you were like really detailed and like you got it but how do you how do you kind of like navigate i guess through the different modes that you're dude i know like, exactly what you're talking just about be like, clancy will tell you right now how many times i've called this man 7 a.m like all right bro brown butter That's seats idea. <laughs> right you could eat the seat when you sit on it but it's only at 5 a.m like just dumb and right, then right, like right. two minutes later actually remember that like it's really it was, i know what that rapid fire like oh, i got 10 ideas i want to do them at the same time mm -hmm. which one do i focus on da, 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 da. i've gotten lucky super 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 duper lucky that everything for me ends up co like being cohesive with the music right so if i'm like man i want to make furry hats and wear them all summer ah mm -hmm. oh, but i only want to make trunks no more backpacks bro <laughs> bro my car collection's getting crazy but i want them pastel colored Oh, all these hard rap songs i'm making i'm back in my rap mode i just want to <laughs> rap over other people just rap and rap and rap. Yo, Tara Punch, bro, I got this new idea for like how we could shoot stuff. Like only 30 seconds, not doing the full songs. No, let's just do, let's just do one minute and just do long intros. But like, I want to color it like this. No, kind of like we did that, but like this. Okay, let's do practice stuff. I'm lucky that all of that ends up just being one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, and I'm, Dude, like now saying it, I'm like, I'm lucky. And I get to focus on how the videos look, but then I'll get to focus on the clothes because then that's going to be in there. Mm -hmm. But the clothes matches the shit I'm rapping about on the music. But then the music, oh man, what a, oh well, I'm rapping about these accessories. Ooh, make the custom accessories that could go in the cars that look good in the way that the videos are shot and colored, which I'm also talking about. And then I get to do that. Like, so I'm super, super lucky that I get to coincide all of that. And you know what that end result is? Mm. A world. Right. World building, right. Exactly. So all maybe if you got 10 ideas, seven of those actually live in a frame and you just haven't figured that out yet because you're too zoomed in mm -hmm. you gotta wow. zoom out and be like oh this is it those other three i'll do next year but mm -hmm. these seven oh shit, i didn't even realize it mm -hmm. so sometimes yeah don't even think about ah, oh, i want to do too much mm -hmm. you could do it all and it could end up working Maybe this just goes back to like instant gratification, you know, because you are working on each and every one of them like at the same time and they all kind of like go together. But um, the time or like the length that you're like going, I guess, like worth it at the end because it all comes back into that same world. Um, I, I feel like you talked about this, like you don't really get into the instant gratification or it's like not your friend always, but you're literally working on all seven of those things like at the same time and they just cater to you in different in different ways so maybe that's what pulls you to like work on maybe the t-shirt 
Yeah, this time it's just like, sometimes just in that moment, like what that innate feeling is, right. and um, and instant gratification is sometimes just like not, cause man, I, I know it's a lot of people who will work on something, and then because of the time we live in, you'll post it on Instagram, mm-hmm. and no one will really say anything, and then you're like, F-. but it's like, dude, you just building a resume. Mm-hmm. Like that's okay, and you never know who's watching. Like y'all don't know how many people's pages I be on YouTube's, <laughs> listening to them. You like you don't know who's watching. I found Rex Orange County. I found that man on YouTube, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is amazing. I had six views. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> this is crazy. You are talented. Come to come to LA. Mm-hmm. Please, let's just work on some worst come to worst. We don't use it, and it sucks, but this is sick. Mm-hmm. We do a few songs. Da, 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 da. Ill friendship. This kid is a talent, bro. Now he's killing it, and that's happened so many times. You never know who's watching. So the thing that you think, damn, I put so much time into this, no one's seen it, or mm-hmm. oh, was the payoff good? Like, man, you never know what that payoff might mean to someone else. You might not get the payoff you want, but someone, dude, one of my favorite albums, the new who made it hates it. No. And I'm like, bro, this album changed my thought process, mm-hmm. how I approach things, how I open the door. And he's like, oh, that shit's trash. I'm like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> so keep running whatever you're doing because it sounds like you truly care and you've hit a wall that you've built. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a wall you built. <laughs> you, built, you built that wall, and, and your hand is all the tools to knock that down and go build what you really need to build. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. And I love your hair. That is <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank uh, you uh, one last thing, one last thing. Um, earlier you talked about how uh, it's the feeling. It's kind of like what you navigate through. I just want to say, anytime I get stuck or I try to think about, like, where I want to be, if I don't, if I can't visualize that, if you focus on the feeling, you will always get there. So exactly. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> focus on the feeling. Fire. That was that That's was great. tight. No one in here was weird or wild. Or <laughs> it was great. I'm happy I did this. Um, one last question from anyone. No, I think we we gotta we gotta wrap up. Hold on, I'm here. <laughs> Just get one more. I'm here. Once, once I leave, I'm gone. Who? Yo, my name is Jay. Nice to meet you. What up, bro? Um, I kind of had two, so it's not as deep. Ask for I'm forgiveness. In, I'm in the look, <laughs> so I'm in the cars as well, and I wanted to ask you, what's your favorite car that you've driven? Because I've seen you in the Ooh, Enzo recently. That I've driven? That you've driven. Ooh. <laughs> okay. My E30 mm-hmm. is my favorite. That's, That's my favorite. baby. I love that thing. I know it. Like, I know that car very well. Stock? Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I got an S52 engine in there right now. It's nice. But I drove... After I got to drive the Enzo, mm-hmm. I got to, my friend let me drive his uh, GT2 RS, the Porsche. And I've never driven a Porsche. Mm-hmm. Uh, that thing was crazy. And this is Paris, so like, mm-hmm. they have these weird roundabouts and like, and I'm driving like a psychopath and the handling on there is, it's, great. it's serious. Drive one one day. Just go test drive one. Just be like, oh yeah, I'm really good, and just <laughs> just drive it. drive it. It feels really good. Not sure if I want one, but like, that was super fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I and I drove a lot Ferrari on a track. Crazy. Better than the Enzo. Definitely, definitely. That's a <laughs> ten year difference, basically. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Super fun. Second question, completely away from cars, which are fashion taste and everything. You know, I feel like with each album, your style has changed like a little bit um, between each or like more recently, like a more major change. So I wanted to ask like, what brought about that change? Maybe I know it's probably like a personal thing. Like you just like, I no, like dude, different you just, stuff, but 
How did I'm that... just dressed like Thurness from Loiter Squad. Yeah, like how did <laughs> that come about? Like but the old man kind of me. I'm like, like I'll I'm easily I could easily be like, oh, I like that, but I'm I wouldn't wear it, or mm-hmm. I like that, but I'm not there yet. Like, and I think what stuck with me is just my color palettes mm-hmm. uh, yeah. throughout everything, but mm-hmm. the pieces just change. Yeah. Um, but man, traveling like traveling and i i talk about that so much and as a kid that wasn't something that was encouraged a lot Mm -hmm. the encouraging exploration wasn't like the thing and i I try to do that a lot at least in the last two years because like now that i'm older i'm like oh that was the most important thing that happened to me Mm -hmm. i don't think it was getting a record deal or all of that. I think me leaving LA and getting to see, really see things uh, changed everything. How I approach music, how I uh, comprehend things, how I dress. Uh, You get to another place and you're like, damn, that's what they wearing? Or damn, that's what they wearing? Hmm. Or, oh, I didn't know Burgundy and Mint went together. Or, I think people that's born and raised in LA know how to wear shorts. <laughs> Just know how to wear shorts. And because of that, you wear shorts. I didn't really wear many cargo pants or have many jackets. I'm still learning how to layer because out here it's usually warm. So, man, because I got to travel and see places where they need to layer, where it's cold, where they wear a scarf, where they wear gloves, where they wear certain shoes because of the snow and boots. I never wore f- boots until last year, bro. So understanding that, like, oh, boots, Mm -hmm. a scarf? Damn, I wonder if I will make a scarf now that I can wear them. Uh, Actually, I would do this to it. I would do this to it. And that opens my mind for music. Hmm. And now I'm thinking of making scarves. Well, damn, how could I? So that right there is what single-handedly changed and opened up how I design and make clothes, me leaving. So if anyone ever gets the chance to just, I'll take a three-day vacation up north in my state. They don't even got to be far or nothing. Do that. Literally do that because it changed. Me going to Marin and walking in a damn park barefoot for three hours literally just had me coming home like, oh, I got to switch this up. (laughs) It's it's really important. So it's warm in L.A. I'm so from Los Angeles. The when we drive, we just drive. When I was in Paris, because it's cold, it's certain ways you can't drive that he was telling me. And I'm in the cars, but I don't know all the yeah. technical. Shit, so I didn't know that. So he's like, "Oh, we gotta go over here because the ground is warmer and this and that." And I'm like, yeah, bro. "Bro, that's." And he's like, "You don't gotta think of that in like, California." But in Paris, a day later, some millionaire crashed his Enzo mm. from me driving a day later it, some guy crashed his Enzo because he drove somewhere where it was cold no trash and now that and I wouldn't have known like yeah. that unless I got to travel and I'm so happy that small piece of information is gonna go into how I make tires in the next few years if I do it or something like yeah just little like that so travel 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 that's all that last album is about yeah. travel go <laughs> see the fucking world Absolutely. Appreciate you very much. Yes. And I want to say thank you for always shouting out Hawthorne, South Bay. You mentioned San Pedro earlier. I've always went back and forth between Los Angeles and Torrance. So you bringing up the South Bay. Is very bro, much I am bro. from, they always say I'm from Ladera. I, when, my, when my mom left, uh, she, she moved to Sacramento and I just stayed at my grandma's. And she lived basically in Inglewood, but that's mm-hmm. next door to Ladera, but we would, I would hang out with people there, so that's where we would be at. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. But I am from Hawthorne, California. That place is gross. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, but I'm so happy <clears throat> to be from there because it's a street. I took a photo of it the other day. It's a street. It's El Segundo, mm-hmm. and all the buildings are really low, and the beach is right there, but the sunsets that's why I like sunsets so much because I grew up there mm-hmm. and oh my burger uh, if yeah. you get a chance nigga, oh, f- oh my burger so great. fire it's a restaurant but like that's over there in that area that's where I grew up and <clears throat> man you don't realize how much uh, 
your environment mm -hmm. and the home that you try to leave. I hate this place. It's so ingrained into mm -hmm. you end up liking. Yeah. Uh, my people, uh, why, why you like why you like these bright colors so much? I don't know. I just like them known. It's always sunny and <laughs> saturated yeah. where I grew up. Mm -hmm. But you don't know that till you get 30. Yeah. So I'm 25. Like, I don't know. I'm just creative. Like, hell <laughs> <Yeah>. stop. <laughs> so hell yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you very much. You have a good one. Thank you. Love. Thank Appreciate you. your question. Tyler, you've been you've been dropping a lot of gems up here. I am not saying I don't know. You know what? Gems is relative, so I can't even shoot you down. <laughs> if you if y'all if y'all taking you know, what I'm relative. saying, man, and you that's fire. And I appreciate that the bull I'm spewing could be taken and shoot shot somewhere <laughs> in the damn sky. Man, well we we definitely appreciate your time. Appreciate you sharing all that you shared here. Special thank you to all the All-Stars that are here with us thank and also the ones that are on Discord. Thank y'all so much. Um, until next time, Tyler. Until next time. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Shout out the team, especially Lindsay and Tim, who have been my cheerleader since day one. Um, you interviewed me earlier. You was nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Just <laughs> exist and do your thing next time, all right? <laughs> and um, I'm happy y'all sat here and listened to me just talk dumb for <laughs> two hours. Almost. Oh, okay. This watch don't work. I just got it. <laughs> <laughs>